Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to discuss how to measure economic growth. So, our topic is measurement of economic growth. Measurement of economic. So, friends, what is growth? Growth is you know change in your real output, real output of a country. By real output, I mean to say output at constant market prices, right? Uh, prices keep changing, so we need to keep prices constant. Uh, for example, uh, you can think about a situation in which a country is producing suppose 10 liter of milk and the price of milk is rupees 6. So, you can say that uh, milk product production of the worth of rupees 600 has taken place. Now, what happens in the next year? Uh, price of uh, per liter milk becomes rupees 100 and if same production is uh, there in the next year also, but if you see the market value it will be rupees 1000 worth of milk product. So, production is not got increased, uh, only market value has got increased, but we are to understand that production must increase, growth is increase in production. So, you are to keep the price constant which price is variable, so you are to keep the price constant, then only you would be able to measure properly, you know, economic growth. And uh, multiplicity of concepts are used for measuring economic growth trends, but most popular in the world is this concept of economic GDP. So, most of the countries use GDP gross domestic product to measure economic growth, but there are some economists which say, who say, that GDP is not the proper way of measuring economic growth, rather GNP is the best way to measure economic growth. Why they maintain this? I can include uh, those epistilis in the category of those economists who say that GNP should be. Friends, if you compare GDP and GNP, what is the basic difference? Like uh, in GNP, you include production of your, you know, your people, your nationals, right, your uh, factors of production. And in GDP, what happens? You take the concept of boundary. So, even if foreigners are producing in your country, you will think that it is part of our GDP. But in calculating GNP, you remove that contribution of foreign factors and you aid production of those factors who belong to you but who are working outside. So, uh, according to Joseph E. Stilish, GNP is the best. Why? Because it shows the real picture of a country's citizens. So, economists differ across which concept is. And uh, let me tell you, UNDP, UNDP, you know, publishes every year Human Development Report. Recently, HDR for 2021-22 was released by UN. Even UNDP uses, you know, GNI. So, GNI is similar to GNP. The only difference between GNP and GNI is like uh, uh, GNI is nothing but GNP at factor cost. Right? So, the issue is that here also N is there and here also N. Since UNDP does also believe that we should use a GNP sort of thing because according to UNDP, there are various countries which are getting income from abroad, their factors are working outside, they are sending income in the respective countries, they are earning income abroad. So, we are to take that concept which include earning from abroad. And in 2010, UNDP used this GNP instead of using GDP as a concept. So, depending upon which uh, thing you want to emphasize, right? If you want to emphasize resource utilization sort of thing, that in your domestic boundary, whatever resources are there, how best you are exploiting them, you have to go for GDP. Otherwise, uh, if you want to see that what is the contribution of our citizen here in this country or outside, then you need to go for the concept of GNP. And um, since GNP is having, you know, taxes, uh, because uh, GNP, if you do not any word here, then GNP is at market price only. GDP is always at market price. In market prices, taxes are included in that way. So, 
uh, it does not show real income of the people. Why? Because your GNP or GDP value will be higher by the amount of indirect taxes in that way. So, economists say that you should go for the concept of uh, factor cost, right? So, TNI, when you calculate any item of any item at factor cost, right? You are to remove net indirect taxes from uh, market value and you will be able to get uh, production at factor cost that can be called by you as income because uh, factor cost is one view of producers, but it is the income view of workers, those people who are working, those people who are working as factors. Whatever you pay to factors is income by the factor. So, people talk about, you know, TNI or GNP factor cost. And if you remove like depreciation from it, from GNI, oblique GNP, FC, if you remove depreciation on machines, because machines depreciate and that that is the loss in your income. So, another concept is like what NNI, net national income, if you remove depreciation from this, you will get NNI. NNI is also many a times called as NI national income, right? And um, population keeps increasing. So, economic welfare keeps declining if population is higher because we need to provide for increasing population. So, per capita income can also be used like PCI. Per capita income can also be used as a measurement of economic right friends. So, these are some popular concepts which can be used to measure economic growth, but throughout the world, uh, most of the countries focus on GDP friends. But I gave you uh, various reasons why different different concepts need to be used. And one more thing is uh, what like all these items are to be calculated at constant market prices, so that whatever change in the values of these items uh, is taking place, we can say that it, it must be due to change in production. So friends, today uh, let us finish this, right? And uh, if you want to get uh, more detailed articles uh, on various economic issues, then you should go on to our website ramishwasis.com and there is an icon there in the name of knowledge store. So you should click that icon and you can explore multiple articles. Thank you friends, let us meet in the next week.